Hello, and welcome to Picks the Flicks. I'm Dennis. I hope everybody had a healthy and happy and bountiful Thanksgiving. And we made it through Black Friday, which this year is really just like an early Cyber Monday. And I noticed that Cyber Monday sales are already on places like Amazon. So enjoy yourself. Today we're going to review a product. Uh, some of us may have seen these LED bulbs that look like or purport to be like flames. I received a couple of these in return for this review. And rather than just strictly reviewing the bulbs, I figure I'd build them into something. Uh, one of the items is a replica of a Japanese lantern that I printed or 3D printed from scratch. And another one is converting an old antique ship's lantern that used to be an oil lamp. But due to the, the fumes given off by burning oil and the fact that my wife and I don't really care for these fumes, I figure I'd give it a shot to try to convert this to the LED also. So these are coming up on Pixtaflix right after the break. This is the ad on Amazon for these LED lights. You can see right now they're on sale. I didn't realize that. Uh, here's the first design. This is from Progress TH on Thingiverse. He saw this lamp and put a design in there to basically reproduce it. Here's what the original looked like. You see, and it's, it's seen some weathering. Looks like it's made in a combination of some metal and wood. And here's my print of his file with some modifications. And I'll talk about the modifications as we get into the design. So here's the CAD model. I increased the height to accommodate the size of the LED lamp. And these files are all from Thingiverse. This is in Tinkercad, which is a free CAD program. And I added a well and a hole and a channel for the cord, the USB cord. I also added some mortises to the bottom of the top so the support could go into the mortises, making a more secure way to attach the top. There's a program called Cura, which is known as a slicer, and it converts the CAD design into code the printer understands, called G-Code, and this tells the printer what to do. This is what the bottom, the base, looks like in Cura after it's been sliced. And Cura gives you the opportunity to do a print preview so you can see how the device will print. And here's the time lapse of the actual print itself. The details are noted there. And I'll just let this run. The lamp is made up of 13 different parts, each of which has to be printed out, and then it's all assembled. And here's the finished lamp, the lamp lantern with the optional base. The second project is a lamp I've had for probably 35 years, and it's an oil lamp. And like most oil lamps, it puts out fumes when it's burning kerosene or the oil. So I've converted it using one of the lamps from the review here, and it's clean indoor air certified, zero emissions. I needed to be able to mount the LED flame lamp inside the hurricane lamp somehow, and it quickly became apparent that the globe from the existing lamp was nowhere near large enough. So into Tinkercad I go again, and I designed a 
hurricane lamp that is custom made to be able to fit the LED flame lamp. Here are the settings. One thing to note is I, I increased the nozzle size. I installed a 0.8 millimeter nozzle and I ran Tallman 3D tea glaze, which is a glass-like uh, filament. And I think it did a really good job and I've used this before and I'm a real fan of this particular type of filament. It's worth noting this is being printed out in what's called vase mode or in Cura it's called spiralize and that means it's just printing the outside layer around and around and around in a spiral mode. Uh, this is normally set up for vases but it does a really nice job for something like this glass hurricane globe. Here's the globe right after printing. Looks pretty cool but I wanted to make it more glass like. So I added a couple thin coats inside and out of XTC 3D epoxy resin. It was recommended on Talman's website, and they did a lot of experimenting with it. So I chucked the globe in a tumbler spinner and went to it. Now let's figure out a way to mount the LED flame lamp inside the old hurricane lamp. First thing I got to do is take out the wick and the burner. Here you see the two globes, the old one on the left and the new one on the right. And you see the new globe easily accommodates the LED flame lamp. It should because it was designed for it. I printed out an alignment ring, sort of a donut, that I put it into place later. You see on the, on the right side. As I was figuring out how to do this conversion, I wanted to make sure that whatever I did could be reversed at a later time to return this antique to its original condition. So the, the donut ring is only held into place with adhesive putty. I also needed a way to mount the flame lamp itself to the top of the oil container, so I went into Tinkercad again and designed this platform that sits on top of where the burner used to used to screw into the oil receptacle. You'll see the lamp fits right in there. And you'll also notice that there is a notch in the bottom of the platform, and that allows for the installation of a right-angle USB cord. There are three modes of the lamp. Flame mode, which you see here, controlled by the IR or remote control light mode, which is constantly on. And then there's a mode, I can't figure out why in the world you'd want it, but it's there anyway, called breath. And what you see here is it drove the autofocus or the auto exposure on my, my iPhone a little wacky. Just kind of goes up and down. The remote control also has a down dim, a minus dim, and a plus dim, a one hour, two hour, three hour and four hour timer. Battery life is solid. It takes about four hours to fully charge, eight hours of running in light mode, fully on, and 20 hours in flame mode. As far as I can tell, it runs indefinitely if plugged into the wall. And here's the final assembly. Again, I still hadn't puttied the retaining ring in place yet. And you can only get a full appreciation when you dim the lights. So let's do that. And that's the completed ship's lamp with the LED flame bulb and 3D printed hurricane globe. Well, there you have it. In case you haven't figured it out, I'm a fan of these LED flame lamps. When this kind of product came out a few years ago, most of them were pretty horrific. In fact, they didn't look much more than a bunch of LEDs bouncing up and down inside of a frosted piece of plastic. In the last two or three years, technology has gone quite a ways, and in fact, I think these bulbs look pretty realistic. They're reasonably priced, and the IR remote is a nice touch. In fact, the only thing I can think of negative that I'd say on these is I don't really care for the fact that the longest you can set the timer for is four hours. 
Most of the LEDs I have have an eight hour option. And this time of year when it gets dark early, you set it to go on right around sunset. And by the time the light turns off, I'm long in bed. The applications for this product are only limited by your creativity and to some extent your skills. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Picks to Flicks. If you did, I'd appreciate you hitting the like button or subscribing. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving weekend. Have some turkey sandwiches. I'm Dennis, and this has been Picks to Flicks. Thank you.